the question. Back in September, the president publicly said that the pandemic is over. How has that complicated the messaging to keep Americans vigilant facing COVID? Yes, yeah, so I think the president was also very clear that COVID is not over. Can COVID continue to pose a challenge for us? Um, that is true. The COVID is not over. And, and obviously, we continue to see people getting infected, getting sick. Uh, unfortunately, too many Americans needlessly dying of COVID. Uh, and so I think the president has been very clear on this even since uh, that day about the importance of get people getting vaccinated, people getting treated. And obviously, I've been out here making that same message. Two more. Go ahead, John. Dr. Jenna, thank you. Um, two, two questions for you. One, is there, are there particular hot spots right now you're concerned about when it comes to COVID rise? And then secondly, based on all three of the viruses you've been discussing, could you talk to us about the strain on the nation's hospitals? Yeah. Um, so particular hospitals, we're seeing cases increase in about 90% of the country. So it is really sort of rising in lots of places across the country. Um, so there's not one that I'm, I think is, in, you know, is particularly uh, worse off. Um, obviously, the, very, you know, the levels are different across the country. But it is rising pretty much uniformly. And it makes sense, right? We just had the Thanksgiving holidays. It's getting colder. Even in the southern parts of the country, it's still getting colder. Obviously, we tend to see more in the northern half of the country because it is colder up here. People are spending more time indoors. In terms of hospital strain, this is something we monitor very, very closely. Um, we look at a whole bunch of national data every day. We are talking to states and jurisdictions every day. Well, not every state and every jurisdiction every day, but on an ongoing basis. Uh, I would say in the last 10 days, I have probably spoken to uh, I or members of my team, a dozen or more states and cities. And, and our first question is, how are the hospitals doing? Do you need more help there? We have a very clear plan. Uh, if a city or a state gets into trouble where they really just can't manage that uh, they can reach out to the federal government. We have a whole set of resources. If that, we can value it. We can send in equipment. We can send in personnel. So we stand ready to help cities and states if and or when they need it. Um, obviously, the single most important thing we can do to make sure that there aren't constraints uh, uh, and there aren't real problems with hospital uh, capacity is if people got vaccinated, they are far less likely to get hospitalized for both flu and COVID. And that's the biggest thing Americans can do to make sure their hospitals are functional for all the other reasons we need hospitals. Okay. Karen, last question. Um, are you concerned that Americans who are testing positive but doing so on at-home rapid tests aren't reporting that to government agencies. So the case counts right now might be dramatically lower than what we're actually seeing for spread across the country. Yeah, it's a really good question. What I would say is, first of all, I'm a huge fan of home tests. I think you know, they're convenient, they're cheap, it's great. One of the problems of, of home tests, really the major problem, is that they don't often get reported. So we do have, through this NIH effort called makemytestcount.gov, I think, um, that people can report their tests. But we have other mechanisms we use to monitor infection levels. So for instance, wastewater gives us very good insights into how much infection there is in a community. So we have seen case numbers often uh, be lower than what you might expect if people were doing more PCR tests or more public health tests. But we're tracking infections through other mechanisms. And obviously, we're tracking infections and, and hospitalizations so that that gives us a very good sense of the burden of disease as well. The last point I will make is when people test at home, if they test positive, the first thought every single American should have is, am I eligible for treatment? The truth is, we have fantastic treatments. Anybody over the age of 50, anybody with chronic disease should get evaluated. Personally, as a physician, I think it's very clear to me that anybody in their 60s or above should be treated. Like, there should be a good reason not to treat somebody. And they're rarely a good reason, meaning most people should be getting treated right now. Um, and I, that is a message we've been delivering to doctors and nurses. That's a message we've been delivering to the American people. If you get a positive test at home, stay away from others so you don't infect them, and get evaluated to get treated.